Um, today we're listening to Treasure. All right, not Heaven or Las Vegas. We're listening to Treasure. After listening fully to Heaven or Las Vegas, I I, I realized that I need more of this band. We're checking this one out next. If you want me to listen to any more Cocteau Twins in the future, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. All right, I love and appreciate you. If you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. My patrons got to see this whole video uncut and live. Feel free to drop your other recommendations down below in the comments. If I'm going to say anything else that's not Dream Pop or not Cocktail Twins, feel free to let me know as always. If you didn't see my ranking video, then you don't know that Heaven or Las Vegas placed number one on that. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is like similar quality to that. Oh. Oh, damn. Oh my god. I'm already feeling more of like a darker tone than anything off of Heaven or Las Vegas. Highest vocal notes that I've heard from her, I think. A lot more darker sort of tone and they're suffocated. You know, it really seems like she's trapped in this cage, which is the instrumental. Um, I think the shoegaze aspects towards the latter end of that song was something that I enjoyed the most. I, I think I was even hearing some background ad-libs from the other members of the band. I don't know if that's true. All right, she's as incomprehensible as ever. All right, so it's going to be a very tough analysis on the meeting. Don't expect any songwriter fucking deep dive here. It's not going to happen. Alrighty. Oh, those drums. Oh, damn. I adore the vocals on that bridge. I adore the vocals on that bridge. She was really, truly going insane on that. That was nice. Really pulled back the highs on those drums. That was perfect. Um, similar to the first song, we're kind of hearing a lot of her high notes on that. Something something that I wasn't getting too much on having in Las Vegas. So I'm glad that we're kind of exploring that vocal side of her on this record. Maybe we're going to see more of that. Maybe not. But yeah, not sure who Lorelai is, though.
This is interesting. Kind of, a, kind of an abnormal song structure from what we usually hear by them. Uh, was not expecting anything like that. Her vocals at the tail end of that were incredible. All right, pretty much a drumless song up until that last part where the kick drum was just kind of built, trying to build momentum until that last big part with the vocals. Uh, the synth in the beginning kind of reminded me of like an uncanny valley sort of thing. Like, was that not, was that not sort of scary? That bass line was carrying, I believe very spatial in the mix i like that a lot kind of traveling around everywhere all right oh my god i feel like someone's cat is attacking me This is insane, actually. Oh my god, bro. Do you remember on track one when I said that it sounded like her vocals were kind of trapped in a cage? And the cage being a song, it sounds like she broke free out of that fucking cage. Um, I'm not lying when I say that that might be my favorite vocal performance I've heard from her yet on any song at all. All right, and I don't want to continue on with the Heaven or Las Vegas comparisons because I get that this I, these are two different albums. But I gotta say, compared to any of the first three songs, this is the one that's most different from anything off of that album that I heard. I was almost questioning if it was the same band when the track even started. Or just the way that guitar sounded, I had no clue that they were even like that or even wanted to do anything with that shit. Oh man. I'm already loving the atmosphere on this one. It's like eating a good meal. It's like getting a nice warm soup. Really speechless with that one. I mean, what can you say? What can you say? There's not much you can say to really put that into words, but I will say this. 
All right, motherfuckers do not know how reverb is done nowadays. That's how it's done. You don't you don't hear reverb like that. Crazy that the band said that this is their worst album. The band said that, that this is their worst album. That's like when a motherfucker says, oh yeah, I dabble on that. And then they make the fucking Mona Lisa. Can confidently say that this driving to the song at to 3 a.m. is goaded. You know what? I was going to bring up driving too. That's crazy. Driving windows down. It's freezing outside, but I got the heat blaring in the car. This was their first real transition from gothic rock to dream pop and it basically invented the genre but the album was rushed out by the label so they always felt unfinished with it oh that's the worst feeling that's the worst feeling i would hate to have a label on my dick saying oh you gotta put this out but the fact that they said that to them and it still came out as a masterpiece is wild to me what to say about that song love the vocal performance love how love the melody when she was going like ah, ah. Oh my god, that... Oh my god. Another incredibly smooth, smooth one, actually. Um, her vocals on that one wasn't the biggest fan. I think the instrumental is what I kind of was drawn to the most. I love the drum pattern on that, and I love how that guitar was really inviting. But yeah, something about the vocals, I wasn't a massive fan of them, but that's just me, you know what I'm saying? I could be I could be wrong. Nothing crazy. Let's get to number eight now, which is Sister... Sister what? Why can't why can't I pronounce that? Oh, that bass line is cooking.
This is also Robert Smith's favorite album. Oh, is that the dude from The Cure? Maybe my least favorite yet? I mean, I thought it was a good song. I thought it was very dope, very chill. However, I just thought the mix on the tail end was just a little bloated. I, I wasn't sure about that kind of synth little organ that was kind of pl playing in the second half of that. I don't know if that was really necessary. I don't, th I don't think the track really needed that, in my opinion, but uh, I still liked it. I still, I still thought it was pretty dope. All right, let's get into number nine, which is Otterly. Yeah, this is flying by. Oh. Oh my god. I'm a wizard in a forest. I'm a wizard. The whispering, okay. Even when she's talking normally, I don't know what the fuck she's saying. I love this prolonged uh, intro. Oh, this might be the whole song. <laughs> this could be the whole song. It's if, if it is, that's fine. All oh, the way that came back in so subtle was awesome. That song is like the musical equivalent coming home one night from the grocery store you bought a steak all right some butter some rosemary some thyme you baste that motherfucker as you cook it medium medium rare mashed potatoes broccoli whole plate gone you'll wash the dishes later it doesn't doesn't matter right now you go upstairs draw draw a nice little bath draw a nice little bath grab a candle grab a candle of your choice all right, draw a bath, bubbles and all. You know what I'm saying? Hop in that motherfucker, put this song on repeat at least 15 times, at least 15 times. I feel so clean after this. I feel like I just took a shower. I feel as if that there is no germ on my body right now. I feel I feel brand new. I feel like my sins have been forgiven. I feel like my record has been expunged. Gonna have that shit on fucking replay all day. But yeah, that was incredible. Let's get into track number 10, the final song. Chimes. I got chimes. I got a rich atmosphere already, similar to the last song. A little bit of tinnitus. It's all good. Oh, what the fuck are you saying? Oh, that guitar. Did they have any records like a between like those six years? Oh. That 
that song was to me at least the dream pop sort of thing that I was like I always envisioned their later album that's why I asked if there was any work in between that because I feel like this track I feel like transitioning from this track and the cherry colored funk would be seamless I, like that's just that's just me um re really like how we had some of that summer energy from that last song kind of carry over into the beginning of this and then all of a sudden boom fucking explosion of that shit um yeah, and we ended in a nice little grand climax. I think it was the best song just because it kind of took everything and really put it together. There was some moments off of this in, in the production that I think I would have did a little differently. I was not expecting a lot of the, you know, diverse moments off of this that I was I, that I did here. Um, so yeah, it was it was a less it was less of a consistent record in my opinion. We had a lot of high moments off of this that I think maybe even surpassed their their best record that's why yeah having a lot of is is catchier the melodies are a little bit catchier this is this i feel is a little bit more niche a little bit more dark uh, and you gotta have a, a kind of a different palette to maybe enjoy this one favorite tracks that opener of course lorelei i think beatrix is incredible uh pandora amazing right amelia otterly my favorite track my personal favorite, I think Domino might be the best one though. That's what I think. Thoughts on the new weekend song? I have not listened. She sang my song. She wanna die That's what I gotta say about this tonight. Alright, if you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. Alright. Uh do it do whatever you want. You guys are the best. Alright, it's been it's been a cool night. Alright, we're ending exactly on the hour.